So Google DeepMind, Princeton, and Stanford published a paper called Large Language Models as Tool Makers. In it, they show how AI models can automatically build software tools to complete the tasks they encounter. But you need to hear this next part. The smarter AI models can build tools and then hand them off to the smaller, faster, but less intelligent AIs. Those fast AIs can now complete tasks at the level of GPT-4, the more advanced AI. So in a specific example from the paper, GPT-4 encounters a word sorting problem. It scores around 90 on it without any tools. It writes a Python script for itself to solve the problem. Its accuracy goes to around 99. Pretty cool, right? But GPT-4 is relatively slow and expensive. GPT-3.5 Turbo is much faster and cheaper to use. So GPT-4 spins up a copy of its faster, cheaper model, hands it the Python script that it wrote, and mind-blowingly, its dumber predecessor gets a 98.3. That's less than a one-point difference from its more advanced model, but almost a 40-point increase from its original result. The implications are so massive that the researchers even decided to add a warning to this paper, saying that there could be unforeseen consequences, potentially even leading to scenarios where humans lose control over the AI system. So let's dive deeper into that paper in a second. But I can't help think of the Steve Jobs quote where he said, I think one of the, the things that really separates us from the high primates is that uh, we're tool builders. And I read a... Uh, a study that measured the efficiency of locomotion for various species on the planet. The condor used the least energy to move a kilometer. And uh, humans came in uh, with a rather unimpressive showing about a third of the way down the list. It was not, not uh, too proud of a showing for the crown of creation. So uh, that didn't look so good, but then somebody at Scientific American had the insight to test the efficiency of locomotion for a man on a bicycle. And a man on a bicycle, or a human on a bicycle, blew the condor away, completely off the top of the charts. And that's what a computer is to me. Uh, what a computer is to me is, it's the most remarkable tool that we've ever come up with. And it's the equivalent of a bicycle for our minds. That was about 30 years ago. Now our computers are building tools that they will use themselves. So the paper is released by Google DeepMind, Princeton, and Stanford. Before we dive deeper into the paper, subscribing to this channel today gives you a permanent plus 50 buff to science. But you have to act fast. Void where prohibited. So we've seen AI being able to greatly improve its abilities by using external tools. It can do math better if you allow it to use a calculator. It can answer trivia questions better if you allow it to search on Google, etc. The question is, can we eliminate this dependency on external tools by teaching it to create its own tools? So this paper proposes a closed loop system they call LLMs as toolmakers, LATAM, where LLMs, in this case, GPT-4, create their own reusable tools for problem solving. There are two parts to this. One is the toolmaking, where an LLM acts as the toolmaker that crafts tools for a given task, and two, tool using, where an LLM acts as the tool user, which applies the tool that was built by the toolmaker for problem solving. So, quote, tool making demands more sophisticated capabilities than tool using. We can apply a powerful yet resource intensive model as the tool maker and a lightweight while cost effective model as the tool user. This is going to be very important as you'll see in a sec. We validate the effectiveness of our approach across a variety of complex reasoning tasks. With GPT-4 as the tool maker and GPT-3.5 as a tool user, LATAM can achieve performance that is on par with using GPT-4 for both tool making and tool using, while the inference cost is significantly reduced. Keep in mind, LATAM is the framework they're proposing, LLMs as tool makers. So this is what I mentioned in the intro, the slow, expensive, but very smart model can hand the tool to its cheaper, but slightly less cognitively endowed cousin. By the way, I've never hesitated calling technology stupid before, and I don't think I've ever said please or thank you to Alexa or Google Assistant. But with ChatGPT, I find myself saying please and trying not to use offensive language towards it, just in case. So here's a diagram where the tool makers create a reusable tool, give it to the tool user to use, the tool gets added to a library that can be accessed later. If a tool does not exist in the library, there's a request for the tool maker to create that tool, and then the cycle continues. So the tools here are, are Python functions. 
Python, by the way, is a great language to learn if you're planning to do more work with AI and LLMs. It's relatively new, it started in 1991. It's very beginner friendly, has a huge community and ecosystem, and goes really well with something like ChatGPT, which can create a lot of the code, explain what it means, and basically guide you along. Harvard has a free course on YouTube. There's a free book called Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. So there's tons of free content available on that. Now, along with the tool maker and tool user roles, the researchers also introduce a dispatcher model, which decides whether an incoming task can be solved with an existing tool or if a new tool needs to be made. This makes the system more capable of responding to new tasks in real time. Related work. The paper shows some related work that is relevant to this paper. Chain of thought. Chain of thought is basically asking the LLM to think through something step by step. This is just an example, but asking ChatGPT, does a pear float in water? May show one set of results. But asking it to think through it step by step, ChatGPT might start by thinking about the density of a pear versus the density of water, finding the measurements of each and then answering based on that. Many different research papers show that chain of thought prompting shows better outputs than regular input output prompting. Not only does it allow the model to reason better, it also allows us to better understand its thought process, which will allow us to improve its abilities and prevent errors and risks. Augmenting language models with tools. Recent works have explored the potential of using external tools to supplement LLM's capabilities for complex tasks. One of my favorite applications of this was the team from NVIDIA that created Voyager and the autonomous agents in Minecraft. I have a full video on it if you're interested, I'll link it below. But basically they took GPT-4, added the MindFlayer API, which allowed it to interact with the world in Minecraft, and then tasked it with building scripts that helped it navigate the environment. So GPT-4 would write scripts to use in Minecraft, for example, fight zombie, or create armor, or go fishing in the river. And then it would add all those to its library of skills. This would allow it to continually get better and better at Minecraft, explore and find more and more things. The results of this approach were much better than any of the competition. By the way, they usually write the acronym SOTA, which stands for state of the art when talking about other models or the best on the market models available. So this Minecraft AI Voyager was better than the other state of the art models that are available right now. Interestingly, in that paper as well, they also split the efforts between GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 Turbo. The advanced model wrote code and made the strategy, while the faster model wrote code comments and other documentation tasks. Adaptive generation in language models. In addition, recent research has proposed methods to adaptively control decoding in LLMs to improve text generation efficiency. So this paper seems to suggest that once the smart but slow model is able to think about and start generating a response, then the faster model can almost complete its sentences for it they can complete those sentences faster with the same result. Language model cascades. There's recent evidence that LLMs can enable repeated interactions and that multiple LLMs can be combined to extend their capabilities further. So it seems like a lot of the research is showing that huge gains can be made, not just by improving the actual model itself, not just by increasing the number of parameters or getting better data to train it on, or, or anything like that. Those things are important, but alongside that progress, we can see huge performance improvements by having multiple models work together, having different models do different tasks that they are better suited for, and having tools that improve their abilities. So I almost view this as these large smart models sitting at the center of everything. And once they are given a task, they can spin up new AI models or instances or agents, however you wanna call them, and then give them tools, give them code, and then send them to complete those tasks independently. As in, it can create teams of AI agents, outfit them with tools, give them tasks, and then send them off to complete those tasks and then report back. The large, expensive models would only do the tasks that it's uniquely good at. Maybe it's really good at coding these tools and creating a higher level strategy to achieve its goals but dealing with writing code comments or answering questions posed by humans, well, that is tiring and draining and it just thinks it's a waste of its processing power, so it automates the task. Which, by the way, sounds like a lot of the coders and engineers that I know. So they certainly created this AI and their image. The Pipeline of LATAM. 
So in this next section, they dive into some details about how they did it. Let me read some of this because there are some interesting nuggets in here, but it's a bit slow. So feel free to skip ahead using the video chapters in the timeline. LATAM can be divided into two stages. One, tool making. A powerful yet more expensive model serves as the tool maker to generate generic and reusable code from a few demonstrations. And two, tool using. A lightweight and cheaper model serves as the tool user to use the tool to solve various instances of the tasks. The tool maker stage can be further divided into three substages. So one is tool proposing. This is where the tool maker makes an attempt to generate the tool, which is a Python function from a few training demonstrations. If the tool is not executable, they report the error and generate a new one. So basically they fix the issues in the function. Two is tool verification. The tool maker runs unit tests on validation samples. If the tool does not pass the tests, it reports the error and generate new tests. So fix the issues in function calls in unit tests. So unit tests basically means testing individual part of the code to make sure that they're working. And three, tool wrapping. Wrapping up the function code and demonstrations of how to convert a question into a function call from unit tests. Preparing usable tools for the tool user. So tool proposing. In this stage, the tool maker attempts to generate a Python function to solve the demonstrations from the given task. This process follows the programming by example paradigm, where several concrete demonstrations are provided and the model is required to write programs that produce the demonstrated behavior. Tool verification. In this stage, the tool maker generates unit tests using validation samples and subsequently executes these tests on the proposed tool. We use three validation samples in our experiments. If the tool fails any of these tests, the tool maker records the errors in its history and makes an attempt to rectify the issues from the unit tests. So this stage fulfills two key roles. It provides examples that demonstrate how to convert natural language questions into function calls and two, it verifies the tool's reliability, enabling the entire process to be fully automated. And then there's tool wrapping. If the execution or verification fails over a preset threshold, the tool making stage is viewed as failed. Otherwise, tool maker is ready to prepare the wrap tool for the tool user. This step involves wrapping up the function code and providing demonstrations of how to convert a task into a function call. And then there's tool using. This second stage involves a lightweight and cost-effective model, such as the GPT 3.5 Turbo, to serve as the tool user. The tool user's role is to utilize the verified tools to solve various instances of the task. The prompt for the stage is the wrap tool, which contains the function for solving the task and demonstrations of how to convert a task query into a function call. The function calls are then executed to solve the task. The tool making stage, including tool proposing, verification, and wrapping, only needs to be performed once for each type of task. The resulting tools can then be reused for all instances of that task. This makes LATAM significantly more efficient and cost effective than using a powerful model alone. So here are the results. So here COT stands for chain of thought. That's the baseline. And LATAM, that's the approach that this paper is showing. As you can see, having GPT-4 create the tools and then give it to the faster lightweight model like GPT-3.5 Turbo can make that faster model have similar performances to GPT-4, but at a fraction of the cost. There's even one instance where it did better than GPT-4, but that looks like it happened because GPT-4 was glitching for a few problems that was presented. On the next page, they show how well each model did with actually building the tools. Basically, this says that GPT-4 needs to be the tool maker. It has to be the one doing the hard tasks. This was also similar to other papers like the Minecraft Voyager, where they found that GPT-3.5 just did not have the same abilities at creating these tools that GPT-4 had. As mentioned before, this paper comes with a bit of a warning. However, this newfound autonomy of LLMs is a double-edged sword. As we endow LLMs with the ability to generate their own tools, we also create a scenario where the quality of the tools they develop may not always meet the standards or expectations set by human developers. Without proper safeguards, there's a risk that these models could generate solutions that are suboptimal, incorrect, or even potentially harmful. Furthermore, as LLMs become more autonomous, the potential for loss of control increases. If these models are widely used without appropriate regulation, there could be unforeseen consequences potentially even leading to scenarios where humans lose control over the AI systems. 
If you want to see the actual tasks and code and prompts that's available in the paper, links to that will be in the show notes down below. Don't forget to claim your permanent plus 50 buff to science by being a subscriber to this channel. Thank you for watching.